Okay, in the last video, we talked about how the, the NABLA operator or the DEL operator could be used to find the gradient of a scalar function. And we actually found that the gradient of some scalar function is actually a vector field. And we plotted that on Altif and we saw how that could tell us things like how the actual gradient of a scalar function is changing and the vectors in that vector field will not only tell us the direction in which the maximum slope is happening at each point but also will tell us what the size of that gradient would be so we saw that this is a very useful kind of operation that we can perform now let's say that we did the opposite let's say we started off with some vector field so we have a function that has a function in each of its components and now we're going to grab the del operator which is actually a vector function in itself so the x components the derivative with respect to x then the second one with respect to y and so on and we're going to define a new kind of operation and this operation is going to be called the divergence of the vector field f and it is more often written in the following form so basically the divergence of the vector field f is defined as the vector dot product between the vector field and the nabla operator so just to recall a little bit of some vector algebra when you have the dot product of two vectors all you do is multiply the comp corresponding components together and then you just add them up so in the end you're going to get the result that is shown here so as it turns out this vector operation gives us a scalar function and this scalar function is the sum of all those first partial derivatives of this vector field so the physical insight behind this is a little bit harder to explain than that of the gradient so we're going to not concern ourselves too much with the physical interpretation of this so what I'm going to do instead in this video is just focus on applying this to a few examples just so that you, you can get your head around how this operation works and then in later videos we can explore some of the possible and the, and the very frequent applications of this in, in a physical context now from now on you will notice that I'm going to start using this shorthand notation instead because essentially writing partial derivatives using this it can be quite exhausting especially when you have to write them over and over again so I'm just gonna use the shorthand method which is just you just write your partial symbol here and then you just write a subscript indicating what kind of um, variable it is the partial derivative is taken with respect to so this is just operating on this this is operating in that and so on so let's now work through some examples let's start off with the following vector field suppose suppose we're given the vector field 3x squared cosine of xy and then sine of x squared plus y squared all right so particularly a difficult vector field to visualize so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the partial derivative so basically we're going to get the divergence of this vector field which is going to be as follows so the first thing we're going to do is take the partial derivative of this function so let's take partial respect to x of the function 3x squared then we're going to add this to partial of y of cosine of x y and then add partial of z with respect to this function here and now we just do one by one so this is a pretty straightforward calculation so this one we differentiate respect to x this is just going to give us 6x then this one here is going to be well differentiate this with respect to y we're going to get minus we're going to get this is multiplying y so this is going to go at the front and then this is going to become sine so sine of x y and then finally this with respect to z well we notice that there's actually no dependency on z here so this just becomes zero and in the end we're going to have the following function 6x minus x sine of xy which can actually be written in the following way so we have x of 6 minus sine xy 
and you will notice that this is actually a scalar function because we now can plot this as a function of two variables it would actually look like a surface in three dimensions and this is bit, this is it so the divergence is a very straightforward calculation and it is actually quite useful for some things that I will show you later on but just before we move on with um, those applications let's just do another example just to solidify your understanding of what this operation is doing so let's do another example let's suppose we have now a vector field v and let's put a bunch of more complicated stuff in it so let's say x e to the x squared minus y squared and then we're going to have sine of set x squared minus 3y and then we're going to have set to the power of 3 over 4 of phi to the minus set x squared so this is going to be our vector field and now we're just going to find the divergence of that so we're going to take this now just as before we're going to have this operating on the function x e to the x squared minus y squared then we're going to have plus partial uh, with respect to y acting on this function sine set x squared minus 3y and then finally we have partial set of the function set to the power 3 over 4 e to the minus z x squared so what does this become well let's start off with the first one so the first one is going to turn out to be okay so we're going to have to use the product rules here so we're going to have e to the x squared minus y squared plus so we're going to differentiate this with respect to x so we're going to have 2x times this so that's going to be 2x squared e to the x squared minus y squared here we're going to differentiate this whole function with respect to y so what's that going to become well this is going to be minus 3 cosine of set x squared minus 3y and then the last one is just going to have to apply the, the product rule once again so we're going to have the following we're going to have 3 set squared over 4 times e to the minus z x squared and now we're going to differentiate this so basically we're going to have the derivative of this is going to be x squared so it's going to be minus x squared actually so minus x squared set cubed over 4 times e to the minus set x squared and then let's see what else we can do here so let's see if we can group some of the terms together so we're going to have e to the x squared minus y squared times 1 plus 2x squared and then let's group these two together so we're going to have plus e to the minus set x squared over 4 times 3 set squared minus x squared set cubed and then the last one is just going to be minus 3 cosine of set x squared minus 3y alright so hopefully this is giving you a good idea of uh, how the divergence of a vector field is calculated and how you obtain a scalar field or a scalar function out of it and then in the next few videos we're going to talk a little bit more about some of these operations and we're also going to talk about the curl of a vector field which actually has some interesting implications